Hey everybody, welcome back. I've had this now for probably, I don't know, three weeks. So I've had a good amount of time to, uh, to play around with it, assess it, and come up with my honest opinion. And uh, here it is for whatever it's worth. And I think if I'm not mistaken, I probably, uh, I'm not going to pound myself or pat myself on the back, but I think I was the first one to get one of these. And take the take the chance off of Amazon and at least review it uh, or notify uh, folks on YouTube. And the funny thing is, I'm I'm really amazed at how good this guitar is for the money. Uh, One hundred and nineteen ninety nine for a Fender Squire product. In my opinion, that's a completely playable Strat style guitar or Stratocaster for that matter, right? can say it because it's Fender, um, is amazing, right? I really think it's amazing. Now, I know there are, have been a lot more videos since posting, people demoing it, people playing it, people giving their opinions, uh, maybe some additional comparisons of this versus other budget guitars, not so familiar name guitars, and um, what their opinions are. Here's my take. If you're looking for a Strat style guitar or a Stratocaster, right? You don't have the money for a, a made in Mexico or a U.S. Um, made instrument, but you really want something as close to an authentic Strat as possible. I don't see why anyone would buy um, a knockoff, especially if it's in around the same price as this. Certainly for not more money, but even if it's around, let's say, a couple of bucks. Um, less than this. Uh, I don't know why, because first off, I have a crazy thing. Maybe it's my OCD or whatever, but the headstock means a lot in terms of authenticity with the style of guitar, whether it's a Les Paul, whether it's a Strat, whether it's a uh, an SG, whatever the case might be, Rickenbacker, whatever you want to call it, the headstock defines the guitar, in my opinion. Now, again, that's only my opinion. For others, it may not make a difference at all. It may just be that they have what looks to be something very similar to a Stratocaster for the least amount of money, and uh, or something that the manufacturer claims is significantly better than this, which might be a maple fretboard or rounded off fret ends, or you know Alnico pickups or whatever you want to call it. Right? I've played enough of these at this price point to know if that really matters or not. And in most cases, I don't even know for a fact if the fretboard is in fact baked or mapleized or if it's just, you know, wood that's painted or, or um, tinted to look like that. Similarly, the rounded fret ends on a lot of the budget guitars that I get aren't even even. I mean, they're rounded off because they're done prior to installing them on the guitar. But a lot of them are uneven along the fretboard, and it almost makes for a worse playing experience and certainly look than just having regular frets filed down. Um, if I get a couple of sharp fret ends on a guitar, it doesn't throw me because with my limited, and you know how limited I am in terms of uh, luthier skills, that's the easiest thing to do by just taking a, uh, a sandpaper pad and just filing them and rubbing them down so they're not sharp. I was lucky with this guitar. Um, I had no sharp fret ends on here. There was no need for me to do that. Um, in terms of Alnico versus ceramics, price point is everything, right? People aren't doing any favors for you. Uh, the manufacturer usually wins, not the buyer, uh, in terms of what's going on with materials. So having Alnico pickups, and I've had many of the lower-end guitars that you know claim they have Alnico pickups, and they certainly do, but I find them sounding no better and in cases in some instances worse than the stock you know budget priced ceramic pickups that are in the squires whether it's a bullet a sonic or in this case it's a debut so i don't see and this is my own personal opinion i do not see any reason now that fender and squire has gotten the guitar at this price point a little bit more than 100 bucks to buy a knockoff that's going to be, you know, a couple of bucks less because you're going to lose it when you if you decide to resell the guitar anyway. You're certainly going to get more money for a Squire, right, because it's affiliated with Fender 
than you are for a knockoff brand. There's no question about that. And it's a lot easier to sell because I've done enough of that too. If you list one of these on Reverb or, or eBay, it's a lot easier to have a taker for something that's a known entity than it is for a brand that nobody knows about. So if you do buy one of those, just a heads up, you're going to stick with that guitar probably for a while. <laughs> Retire it, right? Um, don't expect to get anywhere near your money back or any money back in some cases. It's almost impossible to sell some of those guitars. That's, that's one thing. The other thing is, again, I just like the fact that that's a proper Fender-looking headstock. Some of these other headstocks, they, they have to because of the patents with Squire and Fender make their own shapes, and that just is not something that's personally appealing to me. The other thing I really love about this particular guitar, and some have said, oh, I like the, you know, the gloss finishes on guitars or whatever. I really like this matte finish. And although this guitar is not probably as accurate color-wise as it's portrayed to be on the Amazon website, um, it almost looks like a, uh, more of a, a, a vibrant red, right? Whether you want to call it a, a candy apple or, uh, well, candy apple tends to be a little bit darker, but like a Fiesta red. This is a Dakota red, and it says it's Dakota red. And if you are familiar with Dakota red, it is a, a darker spectrum on the color spectrum red than certainly a firehouse red or, uh, you know, um, Fiesta red. This is in my opinion, a nice-looking red color on the color spectrum, and I love the matte finish. And I'll tell you what, for this price point, the quality control is very good from Squire. This guitar is every bit as well, if not better, finished than the Sonics that I bought and the Bullets that I bought. It's really, it's really very well finished. I don't have any blems. Uh, the action was set up out of the box. There were no sharp fret ends. The, the, the fretboard is, is not dry. Um, the stock ceramic pickups, as I mentioned before, are excellent. The neck feels great to play. I love the density of this neck. I think it's perfect for me. It's not super, super thin, but it's far from baseball bat thick. It's sort of um, a medium C neck. And, uh, yeah, and even the tuners, which are usually the weak point on these guitars, are totally fine. They've kept tune. They are, you know, solid in terms of feel. There's not a lot of play, wiggle in them. I have nothing but good things to say about this debut. Um, also, it has a tremolo bar, and I've just toyed around with it, and it's fine. I don't use the tremolo, so I'm a bad example of it. But it seemed a, a, as stable as any at this price point. And again, Strat tremolos have never been known for keeping holding tune after you after you abuse them. Um, the, what else do we have to talk about? That's pretty much it. I mean, yeah, does it have budget components? Of course it does at this price point. You're going to have lower, lower cost pots and sized pots. You're going to have pot metal for your bridge. You're going to have controls that are probably, you know, lower cost plastics. Um, but you're going to find that on any budget guitar, right? If you buy a guitar for less than $500, you're going to find that on any guitar you buy. So, this guitar at $119.99, the only thing these guys are missing to absolutely wipe out, in my opinion, the guitars that are anywhere near the cost of this is to throw in a gig bag, right? Throw in a gig bag, Fender, Squire, come on. What's going on? It's ridiculous. I mean, yeah, they give you three months of Fender play. Half the people don't even take the time to register for that thing or even use it, right? They give you a two-year warranty. Wow. I mean, yeah, that's nice to have. It's good for peace of mind or whatever. But throw in a gig bag and some accessories and forget those other two things. And if you did that, this thing, in my opinion, would, it would go up a couple of notches in terms of people's interest and in, in, in buying these guitars. But again, my, my feeling, and again, it's only my personal feeling, right, obviously, is that if you're talking about a little bit north of $100 for a, a Strat-style guitar, I think this is the best value out there on the market, far none, for your money. It really is a nice playing guitar. It's a decent-sounding guitar. Uh, it has that on the headstock, so if you do change your mind or your child changes their mind, you can get rid of this without much effort and probably get back close to what you paid for it, especially at $119. Bucks. 
um, a lot closer to what you paid for it than somebody else that nobody knows about. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Am I happy I bought this Squire debut? Absolutely. I think it's a great deal. If you have any questions, put them below in the comments. If you like these videos, please subscribe. And as always, guys, until the next time, be well and stay safe. Take care.